YouTubers, friends, and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we're on May 29th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always start note here, looking at our sun, 304 angstroms. You will see in the last few images here, bottom left-hand corner, same sunspot region, responsible for all of the X-class solar flares we've seen the last few weeks. Right there, X-class, X1.4 class solar flare. Looking at the last 48 hours, cresting into view, this is the large sunspot region responsible for the X-class solar flares. Come around yet again. Looking at the last 48 hours, outgoing, not much going on in the outgoing position. Small plasma ejection there on the left-hand side. But closer look here, we did have some activity just before the X-class solar flare. A couple M-class solar flares, one in the northern part of our sun. And then right here, X1.4 solar flare. Big plasma ejection and creating a coronal mass ejection. Having a look here, multi-spectrum, amazing images brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Still some sneaky plasma filaments across the surface of the sun right now. Keeping an eye on those as well. So most likely we will see some more activity as this comes into an earth-facing view. So heads up everybody and please share this channel with all of your friends and family if you want to keep them aware and prepared what our sun is up to and what our planet is doing and how it's all being affected and connected 171 angstroms here nine sunspot regions looking at these sunspot regions in motion watch the bottom left hand side there's that big sunspot region and the x flash this is a pretty big and complex sunspot region turning into view current space weather conditions we are under r3 strong radio blackout impacts expected wide area blackout of high frequency radio communication for about an hour on the sunlit side so that was right across the pacific and north america or sorry the atlantic and north america solar winds are coming in at 363 kilometers per second right now Looking at the solar x-ray flux, as you can see, long duration X1.4 solar flare and as well, one, two, three, four, five M-class solar flares before and after the event. Geomagnetic activity hopping up to a 2.4. Highest frequency affected here, as you can see, right across the Atlantic Ocean and most of North America under strong radiation Blackout, high frequency blackouts are expected. So, this is the highest frequency absorption of the cosmic galactic rays. This is our sun, folks, and it fried us today, radiating across the Atlantic. At the same time, a very large eruption in Iceland. Coincidental? I think not. It's all connected. Having a look here at the Space Weather Prediction Center, big coronal mass ejection taking off here and projected to hit us the 31st of May. As you can see, 28th, 29th, we were expecting a small geomagnetic event. And then the big CME from the most recent X-class solar flare comes at us pretty quick expected arrival 48 hours from now if not less it is not a direct hit but definitely going to give us a show of some more northern lights having a look here iswa space prediction spiral backside cme taking off towards mercury that was reported yesterday and then today here 
same thing, pretty much the same space weather prediction spiral, coronal mass ejection, giving, giving us a glancing blow into the 31st of May. And stay tuned, everybody, as things are changing quickly. Having a look at Lasco 3 here, wide spectrum coronagraph, departing star there is Mercury, or sorry, Venus, and the one closing in on the sun is Mercury. Watching the last few images here on the left side of the, of the disk, and you'll see a most recent coronal mass ejection right there. Still waiting for the rest of the images from about 4 p.m. today. Now let's have a look at earthquakes the last 24 hours. Our planet looks like a pincushion here with all of the deep earthquakes that we've seen. Deepest being the 499 kilometer depth, but the deep earthquakes continue through Fiji. And as well notable here, 5.4, but 380 kilometer depth in Japan. Izu Islands region, 4.4 there. Largest being a 5.9 reported yesterday. Myanmar reporting a 5.4 today, and that's where they're seeing all of that most recent rain from the large low pressure system. Notable here, Toretta, Italy, reporting a 4.2 magnitude earthquake. We've seen multiple increases in earthquakes throughout the region and Greece. Nothing to show there through Iceland. South American plate, a little bit busier than yesterday. That's all we saw yesterday was the 4.2 in Argentina. 4.3 magnitude here. Uh, Rivera, Kirguido, the Rivera Plate. No swarms to talk about. Very quiet Hawaii. And no real warning as to um, earthquakes ahead of this eruption this morning. Large eruption, if you haven't seen the video yet, in the Sonnucker volcano in Iceland, the same one that erupted about a month or two ago. Massive fissure opens up. Having a look here at the last seven days for shakers around the world, largest being the 6.6 .6 in Tonga just a couple days ago seeing some very widespread earthquakes and as well following along the cratons we could see some big changes here over the next few weeks especially with this Icelandic eruption speaking of which these maps are going to look a little bit different over the next few days I'm sure here is Iceland not really showing too much this is the SO2 models for the next three days Iceland's way up there in the North Atlantic. Interesting amounts and pressure being released across the New Madrid. Lots of SO2 coming out through those areas and as well up into the Atlantic provinces. Got to wonder what's going on there. This is all brought to you by our erupting volcanoes around the world, folks. The darker the red, the higher the concentration of sulfur dioxide emissions. And if you saw a little bit of the video earlier from the Iceland volcanic eruption, there were some pretty intense pyroclastic clouds and SO sulfur dioxide clouds coming off of that very interesting volcano. So this will change over the next couple days, and as well, so will the temperatures, I'm sure. We've got some pretty cool temperatures for Ontario tonight. Frost warnings across most of eastern Canada as high pressure slips in. And then watch for that cooling trend to continue for the next couple days until about the 1st of June when we see things really start to drastically change. The heat starts to move in from the south. But continuing higher elevation cold temperatures hanging around the west coast could still see some snow falling in some areas. Long range forecast here. Look at all this warm temperatures, all these warm temperatures moving right up into the Yukon and Alaska. 
quick look here over Europe over the last few days here. Long range forecast. Africa looking very hot. And as well across the Arab states. Higher elevation. You can see there Tibetan Plateau. That's still pretty cold. Overlooking Australia. You could see some extremely cold temperatures in the long range forecast here. As winter has set in for you guys down under. And then overlooking the North Pacific, still some very cool temperatures lingering around the North Pacific right now, thanks to El Nino. Heads up, everybody, all along the West Coast. Very hot and dry. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.